At peak fertility, a couple has an average of three months time to pregnancy, which means that really you should be having three conception attempts and take home the healthy baby of your dreams. If you're watching this video, I probably would hazard a guess that that's not happening for you. So we need to figure out what is getting in the way. That really is the most important thing that couples can do when things aren't quite as straightforward as it needed to be. But there are great ways of going about this and there are some terrible ways of going about this. So today I thought, let me give you some of the pitfalls and the traps that I see people falling into often so that you can avoid it. One of the worst strategies I see is people saying, you know, they've been trying for ages. It's certainly been more than three conception attempts, uh, irrespective of age, by the way, because sometimes I see people who are in their early 20s who have already been trying for a couple of years. And then I see people who have been trying for six months at 43, thinking that they have time. The reality is that if you have not conceived within three conception attempts, there probably are questions that you need to start asking. Again, irrespective of age and age of both partners because male fertility also declines with age. So even though we see in the media very often that you know whoever uh, was able to affect a conception in a female at age 90, it doesn't necessarily always translate to that being true, okay, in reality, in practical reality. So we need to really truly understand what are the factors that are surrounding that particular news headline. Because somebody might have said that, yes, I will father this child, but have gotten a donor embryo from somebody, somewhere else. And that's not necessarily being reported in the news. So you don't really know when you hear those news, what actually is happening, how that conception actually took place. And the same happens for when females at 50 something, you know, are kind of depicted in the media as, oh, Janet Jackson had a baby at 50. Even though that particular piece of information didn't make it to the headline or even to the news story sometimes, I can guarantee that that was either a frozen embryo or a frozen egg from way before, which I doubt because that would have been you know, possibly very ineffective when she would have had that done. Most likely though, it happened via donor egg. So don't believe all of the things that you see in the media because they're not always going to be true. But one of the worst strategies that I see is people saying that, oh, you know, next month it's gonna happen in their own minds or to each other in a relationship. You know, sometimes men, have this tendency, and I'm not picking on men here, but men do have a tendency to think that, oh, you know, it's gonna happen. You know, just keep, let's just keep trying, it's gonna happen. And I've seen couples waste years on that, oh, let's just keep trying, or let's just, you know, kind of hope and, and have faith, and, you know, everything is gonna be fine type scenario. I've actually talked about this in a previous live um, earlier this week, actually, in terms of when to say, hey, here's the help that you need, take it, as opposed to thinking that there has to be a different way that you need to have that help delivered. You know, for, for a lot of people, I've seen that, um, that placard, you know, on social media in different places. You need a sign, here it is. You know, in the same way that I'll say now, you need a sign, here it is, right? But the reality again is that that waiting isn't always a very good approach when it comes to fertility because even though age shouldn't be something that we focus on solely because there are many other factors when a couple isn't conceiving that will play a role, it is something that we need to be aware of. We can't just completely disregard it, okay? So one of the worst strategies is just postponing when things are going to happen. Another terrible strategy I see is people just having failed IVF or ICSI cycle after failed cycle and with or without you know, minor or major adjustments to protocol, just keep going down that same path. Often when we have no diagnosis or we have a diagnosis of unexplained infertility or everything looks good on paper, but we're just not conceiving and the recommendation is just to keep trying, I find that when patients actually come to us and that's the history that they've had, it's one of the absolute worst and most damaging things that they could have been told because 
We often find many, many reasons that need to be addressed and often take time in order to be addressed to actually get the result that they want. And we typically treat people who have done most things and haven't had the success that they want. So from that perspective, it's not a wise idea to just you know keep trying and you know hoping for the best. Something else that's really important as well is not to delay getting the answers that you need and getting to the bottom and the root cause of the issue as quickly as possible. That is really how you overcome infertility and recurrent miscarriage when other treatments have failed or ideally prevent them altogether. Because that's another thing, you don't have to go through all of those challenges and all of those failed treatments, you can just really get very clear in terms of a good strategy of, okay, what is it that I need to do and do it. Another really kind of dangerous strategy, and I'll make that my last one because I know we're out of time, is when people come and have a conversation with me and then they come back two years later or three or four and they've done all of it in the meantime, have done all of these other failed things that didn't work and then finally join the program, do the work and finally have a baby. So again, skip that you know kind of delay step and just get on with it also because we know that it takes a good six months to see biochemical change so if you delay beginning a, a effective strategy by three months you're delaying results by nine months if you delay beginning by six months you're delaying results by 12 months and some people do not have 12 months of delay on their fertility window. So those are some things to think about and certainly to consider and getting on with the process is gonna be important. Until next time, bye for now.